fat, dietary fat, is among the most controversial of all nutrients. Uh, in recent years, saturated fat, which used to be considered the major villain in causing cardiovascular disease, has more or less been uh, downgraded as not really that big a cause of cardiovascular disease. It was based on faulty evidence. However, there's one type of fat that remains a continuing horrible villain in, in terms of human health. That type of fat is called trans fat. Trans fat was discovered at around the turn, or I should say first developed at the turn of the 20th century. One of the first products was a product called Crisco. Now what, what trans fats are, trans fats are basically artificial fats, although they're, although they're found in nature too, as we'll soon see. Uh, basically, it's uh, where you take a, a, a type of uh, unsaturated fat and you fill in the hydrogen atoms to make it act more like a saturated fat. What this does is it stabilizes the fat, it increases the shelf life, it prevents uh, oxidation of the fat, uh, which also uh, prevents rancidity. And also, if you use it in baking and cooking, it makes products like cookies and certain other products crispier. Uh, but trans fats are much worse than saturated fats. They definitely do increase cardiovascular disease and cancer. There's no question about it. Uh, they're garbage. There's no redeeming qualities other than increased shelf life for trans fats. However, as I mentioned earlier, there are also trans fats found in nature. And one in particular has earned a reputation as being not only beneficial, but actually healthy and possibly of use for those involved in bodybuilding, fitness, or exercise, or even sports. That particular trans fat I'm talking about is called conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA. CLA has almost the same structural identity as linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is a omega-6 fatty acid, which is an essential fatty acid. Now, with CLA, you have a slightly different configuration, which makes it like a type of trans configuration. And uh, so as a result, CLA becomes a trans fat. It is a, it is a polyunsaturated fatty acid, and it's found naturally in, in meat and milk. Uh, now, you know, they have different isomers, they call it, of, of CLA. There's actually 28 known CLA isomers, but, you know, usually in human nutrition, they focus on only maybe two or three of them. Uh, the, the cis-9 trans-11 isomer is the type found in milk and meat. That's the most natural form of CLA. It's called the cis-9 trans-11 isomer. This is important because the various isomers of CLA cause different effects in the human body and in the sense that some of them seem to promote fat loss. Others actually cause health problems, including insulin insensitivity and, uh, and an increase of the bad type of cholesterol called low-density lipoprotein. The supplemental forms of uh, CLA are made from vegetable, vegetable oils, such as sunflower and safflower, safflower oil, and they contain an equal mixture of the cis-9 trans-11 isomer and the trans-10-6-12 isomer. Now, the uh, trans-10 uh, form of CLA can cause health problems, but when they provide it in a 50-50 ratio, as it is in the typical CLA food supplement, the, the, uh, the cis-9 version more or less tempers it and prevents problems. Uh, nearly all the re research on CLA has been done on those two particular isomers. The average daily intake of CLA from food sources, as I said, meat and milk, is 104 to 151 milligrams a day for women and 176 to 212 milligrams in men. Uh, now, now the biggest, uh, let's say, feature of C CLA has been its effect on weight loss. One study of overweight Chinese people found that providing 1.7 grams twice a day of CLA for 12 weeks reduced body fat by 2% and also had beneficial effects on blood lipid levels. In other words, it raised the beneficial high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, while it seemed to lower low-density uh, low lipoprotein, which is considered the so-called bad cholesterol, even though that's a misnomer, that's another story. Without LDL, you wouldn't be able to make testosterone, so to call it a bad form of cholesterol is kind of silly, but that's another story. 
Animal studies show that CLA imparts what they call a repartitioning effect. What this means is it tends to favor a loss of body fat and a gain of lean mass. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the, I, the theory is that CLA works through a, a system called the paroxysmal, uh, uh, what is it, PPRA, I don't even remember, it's paroxysmal proliferator, paroxysmal proliferator receptor activator delta. And I'm not even going to attempt to repeat that, but let's put it this way. Uh, when you blunt that, you tend to increase fat loss, and CLA is thought to work by blunting that particular uh, substance in the body. But it, it also affects body fat in other ways, which I'll talk about in a minute. Among the clinical trials investigating the effects of CLA on both body fat and lean mass, five publications reported changes in both, while two studies reported increases in lean body mass with no effect on body fat. And another meta, a meta-analysis, that's an analysis of previous studies, a meta-analysis of 18 independent clinical studies assessing the effect of CLA on lean body mass uh, was uh, published, and it concluded that the C CLA supplementation led to a relatively rapid onset of increased body mass, although the total increase was not remarkable, less than 1% increase in body mass, lean body mass, I should say. CLA may provide a thermogenic effect, this is another way that CLA might help you lose body fat. It, it, it provide a, can provide a thermogenic effect, that's the conversion of calories into heat, by increasing the activity of what they call uncoupling proteins. These uh, proteins act in the mitochondria to, again, convert calories into heat and thereby, thereby dissipating calories, and that would help you lose weight or body fat. A 2002 study investigated the effects of CLA supplementation for four weeks in bodybuilders. They gave six grams a day uh, to bodybuilders for a month. Uh, the, the study found that the CLA does not appear to possess any significant ergogenic value since no differences were observed in body composition and strength at the end of the supplementation period. Now this particular study uh, was uh, considered a good study and, and uh, at the time it was published CLA was a popular bodybuilding supplement. It was showing up in various supplements, including uh, so-called meal replacements and, and that type of thing. But this study kind of put a damper on CLA because it seemed to indicate that CLA was no better than a placebo, increasing lean mass and promoting body fat loss. But a study a couple of years later in 2009, and this was a mouse study, it showed that, provided, it showed that providing CLA appeared to blunt the age-associated loss of muscle mass. This is known medically as sarcopenia. And this is a mouse study. And this is a point that I should make now. This is a very important point when you think when you consider CLA supplementation. Nearly all the positive studies on CLA have involved animals. And I'll give you a flat statement. CLA works a lot better in animals than it does in humans. Every study of rice, uh, rice, every study of mice and, and rats and that type of thing, when they've given CLA, all of the animals showed significant weight loss or body, actually specifically body fat loss. In every study, they lost body fat. For one thing, the amount of CLA they gave these animals was a lot more than is recommended for human use, so that might have also been a factor. Also, when you give CLA in large quantities to mice and rats, they tend to get fatty liver. Although this is a possibility with humans, it turns out that rats and uh, mice have a much greater tendency to get fatty liver than humans. So although fatty liver is a possible side effect of CLA use in humans, it almost never happens in humans, but it happens all the time when, when lab animals like, like mice and rats are given CLA. This is another example of why you can't extrapolate animal studies to human studies. <clears throat> in other words, I had some granola that's kind of stuck in my throat. <laughs> if you, uh, if you, if you, uh, in other words, what works in rats and mice and other lab animals doesn't always translate into humans. I've said this over and over again in my videos. I, I, I don't write, uh, I very rarely write about animal studies in my applied metabolic newsletter for this reason, because less than 50% of animal studies are transferable to human physiology. So next time you read a blog and it has a big headline, CLA burns fat, you know, and you read that it's a mouse study, take this into account that it probably won't work for humans.
a 2006, uh, st a 2006 study of 76 human subjects who received either 5 grams of UCLA or a placebo for 7 weeks while engaged in a weight training program found a greater increase in lean tissue, loss of fat, along with indications suggested suggestive of less muscle protein breakdown following training. This was obviously a, a positive study. So, and this is the problem with CLA. The studies are paradoxical. For every study that shows a beneficial effect of CLA, there's another study, and this is, I'm talking about human studies, that show either no effect or even s bad side effects with CLA. So, you know, you're left confused. Does CLA work or doesn't it? A 2012 study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research involved a clinical trial to investigate the effect of CLA with resistance training on serum testosterone levels. In other words, they tested CLA to see if it can increase serum testosterone levels. The authors of the study reported significantly increased serum testosterone and resistance exercise capability with CLA supplementation but no significant change in body weight, fat mass, or lean body mass. So in other words, um, in this study, uh, the uh, CLA did increase, and I think it was a human study, it did increase t uh, testosterone, but apparently uh, this increase in testosterone did not translate into any loss of body fat or any gain in muscle. So I, I would suggest then that the increase in testosterone was not high enough or, or lasted long enough to affect body composition. Animal and test tube studies show that CLA provides pretty potent anti-cancer effects, particularly against breast and colon cancer. Uh, whether it does this in humans is, again, questionable. It may or may not. Now, you know, uh, one of the features, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the proponents of CLA often mention that if you want to get CLA, CLA from natural sources, uh, one of the better sources is meat, but you want to eat a specific type of meat, what they call grass-fed beef. It contains much higher amounts of CLA than traditional beef. In fact, grass-fed beef is 300 to 500 percent higher in CLA content compared to conventional beef. That's one of the features of gra grass-fed beef. Studies that showed improvement in lean mass using CLA uh, involved doses of three to four grams a day. In animals, CLA decreases the uptake of trigly triglycerides, that's fat. In other words, animals, it actually blocks the entry of fat into fat cells. It also increases beta oxidation, which is the way you burn, you oxidize fat in the mitochondria. And again, this is animal studies. Again, the, the fat loss benefits of CLA shown in animal studies involve much larger doses of CLA than is usually suggested for human use. Again, you have to separate animal from human usage. While CLA is usually safe in the suggested doses uh, of usually maybe three to four grams a day, in some people it can cause elevations in blood glucose levels. Uh, and that particularly applies to that trans-10 form I, I told you about earlier. Remember, the cis-9 form is the one predominantly found naturally in foods. The trans-10 is kind of a... Well, it's, it's a natural form, but it's it's not as beneficial as the cis-9 formula. And, and keep in mind that CLA supplements contain both. They contain, they contain the cis-9 and the trans-10. Uh, other, other possible side effects from CLA include liver problems uh, and gastrointestinal distress. However, these symptoms don't happen if CLA is consumed with milk and usually abates after using CLA for two weeks. Now, uh, in men who took CLA, you know, uh, the men were already obese, they, uh, they found that CLA actually worsened insulin insensitivity. In other words, it actually decreased insulin sensitivity when given to uh, obese men. Uh, you should also know that, um, where is that? I had a note here. Oh, the most recent studies show, uh, the most, one of the more recent studies of CLA was published this year. It showed that if you give uh, CLA to older men with heart failure, it seems to help them. In other words, their heart works better. Uh, these are older, obese men who uh, with heart failure. Give them CLA, and it seems to improve heart function. CLA also lowers leptin, which is a, um, uh, a protein involved in the regulation of uh, appetite, which is another possible feature where, where CLA might aid weight loss. Uh, so... You know, you know, when you add it all up, it's it's kind of confusing. I mean, uh, personally, 
uh, I don't, uh, I wouldn't really, I don't use CLA. Uh, I used to use it when I took, uh, it was incorporated in a couple of meal replacements that I used years ago. And usually they had about three grams of CLA in the, I think it was 3.2 grams, which just happens to be the suggested dose. Uh, I never had any problems with CLA, I never had any uh, side effects. Uh, but, you know, I, I again, it was it was part of a, a, a large uh, assortment of nutrients that were contained in the meal replacement, so I couldn't tell you whether CLA ever did anything. Uh, I have never used standalone CLA supplements. I don't recommend them. I think they have questionable health benefits. Uh, uh, some, some studies show that in, in certain people, CLA will act like a saturated fat, and or, or I should say it will act like a trans fat, which it, which, it, which it is, actually, but it'll act like the really bad trans fats, and it'll raise your LDL cholesterol, which uh, puts you at risk for uh, cardiovascular disease. So, if, you know, my personal opinion is don't bother using uh, CLA, no matter what you read on the Internet. I don't think CLA uh, has much value for anybody involved in bodybuilding, weight training, anybody involved in fitness, or anybody who's interested in greater health. I, I wouldn't bother with CLA supplements. So that's it for CLA. If you want more information, in-depth in depth information on nutrition, supplements, exercise science, hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that really work, anti-aging therapy, ergogenic aids, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Guaranteed the best source of information. I cover much more material than any of these other publications that you might hear about. Uh, I cover general health, I, and I cover all the subjects I mentioned, much more in depth. Nobody can match my 56 years of constant studying and empirical experience in the gyms. I know what works and what doesn't work, and I will pass this on to you in this newsletter. It's 40 to 50 pages every month, no advertisements. I promise you, you will learn something every time. Anyone who subscribes to my newsletter, I, I, you will also be invited to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where I uh, every day I add a, a, a plethora of new information on, uh, on health topics and nutrition and exercise science. I also answer questions on, in the uh, Facebook page, my Applied Metabolics Facebook page. And again, that's only open to subscribers. I also answer questions only from, from subscribers to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Uh, and uh, I don't uh, answer unsolicited questions. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the greatest. Take care.